This lesson today examines the basic construction of a double-wide mobile home, focusing on the envelope and HVAC features that will be at the center of your weatherization work. Hello, my name is Chris Clay with uh, the Building Performance Center. I'm the technical coordinator and I'm here today to show you some of the similarities and differences between a mobile home and a stick-built home. All right, we'd like to cover the uh, basic structural elements of a mobile home. The mobile home is brought to the building site on a steel frame. The main elements of the steel frame are the main beams, which are an I-beam. They're held together with the cross members and outriggers. On the uh, steel frame, there are, of course, the axles and the hitch. So we can hook the hitch to the truck and the axles are for the wheels and we haul the unit to the site. On top of the steel frame, we have the underbelly insulation and also the floor system on top of that. The, the floor system is usually a typical two by six floor framing and it's, it's actually bolted to the steel frame with the utilities underneath it, such as the ducting, plumbing, and electrical work. On top of the 2x6 floor framing, we have the floor with finish coverings, finished floor materials. On top of that, we install our outside walls and interior walls. Once that's up, we, we uh, put on the roof assembly with ceiling tiles, trusses, insulation, and roof sheathing. Now, a mobile home is uh, built quite differently than a, a site-built home. Obviously, uh, the two words say it. A site-built home is built on a concrete foundation on the site, whereas a mobile home is actually built in a factory and moved to where it's going to uh, where it's going to stay. Hopefully, now a mobile home uh, floor system basically is framed up in two by sixes and essentially uh, the utilities such as plumbing, electrical, and heating ducts are placed on top of the floor system in the factory. Then it's overlaid with insulation and a road barrier of some kind. And then the chassis is craned out on top of the floor system, bolted to the floor system. Then the whole floor system is flipped over and, and axles are attached and it's ready to roll down the road, uh, which is quite different than a site-built home. A site-built home, obviously, none of that happens. It's all done on site. We wanted to talk a little bit about how a mobile home is sited or how it's installed on the property. So it is uh, usually a mobile home is towed here and backed onto site. Uh, once it's backed onto the piece of property, uh, close to where they want it, pretty much to where they want it, it's uh, leveled and supported by uh, blocking of some kind, wood blocking, concrete blocking. Uh, typically these days it's concrete blocking. It's leveled and then often it's tied down. They have what's called a tie down strap and keeps the mobile home from falling off the uh, those blocks in case there's an earthquake or something like that. A mobile home being level is an important thing because then the doors work properly inside, the gutters and downspouts work properly, um, and often they are in pretty good shape when, when you see them. But a mobile home that's in, uh, vastly out of level could be a, pro a durability problem eventually for the building and the systems within it. So we're going to start with the, f the, the foundation of mobile home. As you can see, there is none because the mobile home has its own structure, steel structure underneath that keeps holds it up. But essentially it's held up by uh, cinder blocks stacked uh, about six foot on center down the steel I-beam and that holds the the building uh, level and and uh, different different jurisdictions require different amounts of uh, structural uh, tie downs and whatnot for that underfloor. Um, it's a steel I-beam and it's uh, set up so basically you can hook a couple axles to it and haul it down the road. All right, now mobile homes are made to, 
to drive down the road and be moved to the site. So there's special protection so that when they roll down the road, they don't get wet underneath and ruin the insulation or, or the wiring or the plumbing we have under here. So this, this mobile home actually has a, 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 hard, a hard belly underneath it. This is made of uh, asphalt impregnated sheathing and it protects the mobile home when it's traveling down the road. Above this in the mobile, uh, in the floor is, is a large uh, space with insulation but the insulation doesn't touch the floor and we're going to basically go inside there later in the video and insulate underneath the floor by putting holes in this barrier and filling it full of insulation. Mobile homes are built very lightweight so they can travel down the road so often the wall is made of either a 2x3 or a 2x4 and there is sometimes an opportunity to insulate that wall. Uh, and sometimes the wall is already full with insulation, but some, occasionally there is an opportunity to insulate the wall. Um, up in the attic up here, we have a, a slanted roof cavity, not necessarily a bowstring to truss. This one's more of a, of a peaked uh, metal roof. And there is quite a bit of room up there uh, to insulate above the uh, insulation that's in there now. Typically, we'll find anything from uh, two to two to five inches of in fiberglass insulation up there. This home has about three inches of fiberglass insulation in there, so we're, we think there's quite a potential to put more insulation up there. We know there's quite a potential to put more insulation up there. Uh, you can see where these mobile homes have been put together here on the, the marriage line. The siding on this particular house has been sort of covers up the fact that it comes together, that these two pieces come together, but this is the marriage line here. Now, every, every uh, home is put on a different building site. This, this particular building site is on a uh, slanted lot with water moving in this direction. And um, where a building is sited is an important feature when you consider a house for weatherization. This house has a lot of water running under it, and um, that could be a problem inside the house if we don't, if we're not careful about our weatherization. Also, since the uh, the foundation is in wet soils, there could be some shifting uh, of the of the structure. So, the siting of a of a building is a very important thing for uh, durability as well as the air quality and moisture levels inside the house. The duct system in mobile homes are, are usually fairly simple. In a single wide mobile home, we usually have one single trunk line that runs the length of the mobile home. The, the HVAC system is installed directly on top of that. In a double wide mobile home, we actually have another trunk line on the other side of the mobile home. That needs to be connected in order to have conditioned air flow between both sides of the mobile home. And that connection is called a crossover duct. Occasionally we'll find more than one crossover duct under a mobile home. Most mobile homes don't have return air ducts. They just use the top of the, of the air handler unit as the return duct, but occasionally they will use the underfloor uh, underfloor belly floor cavity as the return duct or occasionally they'll actually use the attic cavity as a return duct. These are particularly problematic because they're very well connected to outdoors so they, they cost a lot of they cost a lot of money to run those houses and there's a indoor air quality issues associated with that. When it comes to mobile homes, we're gonna find quite a variety of them out there. We have single wide mobile homes, double wide mobile homes. We even have triple wide mobile homes. We'll find mobile homes with metal roofs. We'll find mobile homes with asphalt shingle roofs. We'll find mobile homes with metal siding. We'll find mobile homes with wood siding. But the one thing that holds true about all mobile homes is that, they are, that they're mobile and they're trucked to the site on wheels. In this lesson, we examine the basic building components of a mobile home. Whether it's a single wide or a double wide, they basically have the same components. Understanding how a mobile home is built 
will determine what techniques you use and to what extent you'll be able to weatherize that mobile home.